this presentation discusses the anatomy of the stomach. The different regions of the stomach include the fundus, cardiac region, body, and pylorus. The fundus is the portion that is superior to the junction with the esophagus, and you can see how it curves up towards the diaphragm right here. The cardiac region is the region closest to the esophagus, this little area here. The majority of the stomach is the body. As this large portion narrows down to empty into the small intestine, this region is called the pylorus. So if this is all the body, and then it narrows down here to the pylorus. The pylorus itself has two regions, the antrum and pyloric canal. The pyloric antrum is just the portion that is connected to the body of the stomach, and the pyloric canal is the portion closest to the small intestine. Between the stomach and small intestine is a band of smooth muscle called the pyloric sphincter. This helps regulate the amount of chyme leaving the stomach. The more medial curve between the esophagus and small intestine is called the lesser curvature, and the larger, more lateral curve is called the greater curvature. The stomach wall has the same four layers as the rest of the digestive tract. The innermost layer is the mucosa, and it is made up of simple columnar epithelium. There are folds in this mucosa called rugi, which are temporary, and as the stomach fills, they flatten out. You can see these ridges here. These are the rugi on the inside of the stomach. The next layer is the submucosa, followed by the muscularis externa. Normally, this layer has two layers of muscle. In the stomach, there are three. The inner oblique here, the middle circular and outer longitudinal. Since we are now below the diaphragm, the outermost layer is called the serosa. This is actually the same as the visceral peritoneum. On the inner surface of the stomach, there are shallow depressions called gastric pits. The cells at the base of these pits divide and replace the superficial cells that are lost into the lumen. This ensures that the epithelium remains intact. Each gastric pit leads to several gastric glands. The walls of the gastric glands are made up of several different types of cells. The parietal cells produce intrinsic factor and hydrochloric acid. Intrinsic factor will be needed in the intestines for the absorption of B12. Hydrochloric acid is what makes the stomach so acidic. Another type of cells are the chief cells. They secrete an inactive proenzyme called pepsinogen. When it enters the acidic environment of the stomach lumen, the pepsinogen will be converted to the en enzyme pepsin to help digest proteins. G cells are a type of enteroendocrine cells that produce hormones needed for digestion. Let's talk about how hydrochloric acid is made. Remember that it is the parietal cells of the gastric glands that produce hydrochloric acid, but it is not secreted in the form of acid, but as individual ions. In the parietal cells, carbon dioxide and water join to form carbonic acid with the help of an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Immediately, carbonic acid is going to dissociate into the bicarbonate ion and the hydrogen ion. So we have carbon dioxide and water joining to form our carbonic acid, which will immediately dissociate into the bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion. Both of these ions will leave the cell, but in opposite directions. The bicarbonate ion will leave the cell going to the interstitial fluid in exchange for a chloride ion. 
Once the bicarbonate ion is in the interstitial fluid, it can enter the bloodstream. This is called the alkaline tide because it significantly raises the pH of the blood. The chloride ion will diffuse through the parietal cell until it reaches the lumen of the stomach. The hydrogen ion will leave the parietal cell and enter the lumen of the stomach also. Once both the hydrogen and chloride ions are in the lumen, they will join together to form hydrochloric acid.